position and who should we rotate in on the restream for you all to see. Along with that, we also have some brand new emotes. If you are subbed to ROMHack Races, if you've uh, been supporting us or managed to catch a gift sub from a fine friend in chat, uh, you have access to all the new ROMHack Races emotes. Check them out. They are super fun, uh, and they are meant to be comboed with other emotes. So we've got uh, we've got Rami with a, our, our ROMHack Races bot with a few expressions, a couple of different arms that you can use, and a Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard for our very fine friends over at da vinci's fancy yellow mustard um the idea being that you can uh you can use the rom hack races emotes or you can use the arms to combo with any of the racers emotes so feel free to make make some combos show support for your favorite racers that was the idea going into it is that we have some that are rom hack races but then you can combo with uh with anybody because rom hack races is all about our community and the uh community of people they come together and do this. We're a little volunteer community. We got a lot of folks helping out, and uh, we really, 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 really appreciate it. Dr. No on the restream, Kelgan, uh, Osu, Shoujo, and SJ testing the levels. I'm Glitch Cat. I'm on, uh, you know, commentary. Uh, D to the fourth, doing the website and the leaderboard, of course. And you can check out a little bit more about us and what we do over at romhackraces.com where you can also get the patch for this level and play it for yourself anytime you want. You don't have to be a part of the race, but they are open for everybody. Anybody brave enough to come on and see what they can do. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, grab a drink, get comfy, grab some popcorn, whatever you got. Spam some of those fun new emotes in chat and let's get ready to go. The level is Woods of Wrath. The maker is Adetu. Let's do it. We are ready to roll. Welcome to the race level. Good luck. Have fun. All right. Now, I I test sometimes. This week, I did not do any testing, so I don't know what the racers are in for. If you've never seen this before, uh, the players here have no idea what they're about to do. They're just going to have to wing it, and we're all going to see how it goes. Halcyon, you fail me. I'm sorry. We got two Halcyons. Halcyon in the upper left, and you fail me in the upper right. Lungfish in the lower right. Sorry, we got Louis Doucet. Louis Doucet, upper left, you fail me, Halcyon, and Lungfish. Wigglers are not jank, technically. This is true. This is true. Wigglers are technically not jank. It's just that they uh, they are particular. Moving on a Wiggler is the first obstacle here. Louis Doucet in the upper left already passed it. Oh, this is going to be fun. we got some Wiggler bouncing here. Louis on a pretty good read. And yeah, this level is going to be a lot about uh, controlling these Wigglers as they move they want to move toward you so think of it like you're steering the wiggler if you get far over to the right while you're bouncing on it it's gonna keep walking to the right um it's just that where that deciding line is is weird and awkward sometimes but uh good wiggler control is a skill to be mastered and it looks like louis looks like everybody's got a pretty good handle on this. Aegis Wing, thank you for 14 months. Enjoy the new ROM Hack Races emotes. It technically, you know, it's technically not jank. You fail me in the upper right, getting a little bit of progress on a good read right now. Next thing to do, here goes Halcyon, same section, lower left. Uh, next thing to do is go up on that falling wiggler. And I, I like that obstacle. You're never going to see that in the vanilla game. But it's just a weird property of Wigglers that when they fall, it's like all their segments have a hitbox. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure if I'm describing this exactly correctly in terms of the code, but a falling Wiggler can be bounced on like that. And if you jump on a falling Wiggler, you'll just get like elevated right up into the sky. Uh, here goes Lungfish in the lower left. See that? If you bounce on a Wiggler, it just like pushes you up through the segments and you wind up up at the top of it. It's a neat little way to do a um, like a sprite elevator kind of obstacle. And that's what the players need to do in the next section here. Here goes You Fail Me in the upper right. Yeah, based on how they interact with that wig, wig ladder. I like that. Based on how they interact with the wig ladder, uh, we'll kind of give them a little boost up in the sky as the wiggler is falling. Louis Doucet back again getting that Goomba on the 1F0. And this is a read right now. Louis has no idea what's coming up. Thank you to Orca for the gift sub to Baba Yaga. Enjoy the new emotes. Feel free to feel free to use them. I really like to see them in chat. So 
feel free to feel free to get a little emote spam tonight if you want to. Quiet Mason, look out on a big, big read for progress right now. Quiet Mason, the farthest we've seen in this whole level. And what's it gonna be? They need to ah uh, hmm. Quiet Mason, oh nice strat there, pal. Quiet Mason respawns the gray platform they're working on. Yeah, they're working on trying to get through, and that's a cosmic brain move. Wigglers will also respawn, and that puts C Quiet Mason right through the pipe. That was a really, really clever move there. Yeah, Quiet Mason respawned the gray platform, but also Wigglers that are angry will respawn to their normal not angry yellow color if you get them far enough off screen. That's a really smart move, and that puts uh, Quiet Mason right now in the lead. You fail me in the upper right trying to catch up. Revola, Revolug? I hope I'm saying that right, because they are kicking some butt, too. Yo, welcome. This is a great race. Let's go. Got some new faces in the lead tonight. You'd love to see it. Revolug and Quiet Mason on a battle right now, but can anybody stop Quiet Mason right now? Really good consistency. You fail me might be on it. <clears throat> So next section, a uh, lot of cool platforming here. And then opening the on-off switch to make that Wiggler fall. They're going to need that for later. Quiet Mason on a read again. Oh. Oh. Is that a, is that a one tile jump I see? You fail me with the big progress too in the upper right. It is anybody's game right now. But Quiet Mason on a read again. One obstacle ahead. Oh, what's that? So a little bit of knowledge gained for Quiet Mason there. But it looks like Revolug really close to making that same discovery. Yep, they're down. The one tile gap. So even even match right now. Revolug in the upper left. Quiet Mason in the lower left. Aegis Wing, thanks for the gift sub to Evil B. Appreciate that. Enjoy your emotes. Here goes You Fail Me. Oh, down the one tile and a pause. That's a really clever strat. You don't know what's going to come up. Pausing is uh, legal, I guess you could say, you know, in terms of rum pack race. Totally legal strat. Just pause. See what's coming up next. Take a look at it. Quiet Mason with a little bit more progress. I really like that piranha plant section. But it is still anybody's race. You fail me. Back again. Ooh, trying to get back again. This is a pretty lenient one tile jump uh i mean it, it can be tough you know to to line mario up inside you know death on either sides and a one tile um the thing that makes one tiles really difficult is not necessarily the one tile jump that you're seeing here but imagine if the logs as they were falling if all of those logs were death blocks the farther down like you have one tile horizontally here the more tiles vertically that you have to fall down in a one tile, the tougher it is. That's where you need to start using things like zero speed, where you're drifting, you're falling in the air, but you have no drift momentum. And that's a uh, particular controller trick to pull off. B2, DE81, still working away on the first section. You fail me, Revelug, and Quiet Mason in the lead right now. You know, in my head canon, the Wigglers get their flower back. They, they're just looking for another one. You know, they, they like to get flowers and, and wear them, as, as do many people. And, uh, you know, they, they, they get upset because they dropped it, but they'll, they get another one. That's where they're going. That's why they start running faster. You know, they got to go look for another one. So Quiet Mesa needs to bounce on the piranhas. This is a read right now. And made it down. Yeah, bouncing once on the piranhas to make the timer for the piranha move out. So the piranha will actually get out of the way. Ah! Had the P-switch. Does that head, head cannon help you sleep at night? I don't know. Does yours? RB Pim Ligo joins us in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. Oh, Lungfish's internet. No. No. That's the worst Kaizo trick of them all. Internet goes out. Ah, rough.
Quiet Mason, though. One wiggler, one up pipe. And they have just got to guide this little friend over here. Being really safe. Quiet Mason getting in the up pipe. You fail me. Oh, oh, right. Nicely done. Wow. A sub 10 minute, sub 9 minutes. 8.30 for Quiet Mason. Really strong win tonight. That was great. Pure consistency. And I love how they jumped over the discolored log that was hanging out by the goal. I don't know if that would have killed them or not, but why take that chance? Why in the world would you ever take that chance? Nicely done. Quiet Mason, that's a textbook. That's a textbook win. Big consistency, learn quick, get out of there. Nicely done. We still got a race though, man. We got uh, we got plenty of racers left. 17 total signed up tonight. Revelug, you fail me. RB Pimlico on the second section. B2DE on the first. Really cool level tonight. Thanks so much, uh, Det Detu. If I'm saying that wrong, please let me know. Correct me. Um, but really good level tonight from Detu. Nice and smooth, fun, challenging, good platforming. I like that about it. Louis Doucet, lower left. All four on the screen right now. Second section. Yeah, please. If you if if you have a moment, if you have if you have a moment to say thanks to Skytree for making our brand new emotes, uh, do do that. She worked really hard on them. She is very she is very talented. Revelug in the upper left with the P switch, trying to get a little hasty though. That'll that'll do you in on the wiggler surfing. The if you try to go too quick, you know, you really got to go got to go. Eventually you're going to make one jump that leans out too far to one side and the wiggler isn't going to be able to catch up. Personally, and you know, and I say this as someone who has a very tight grasp on things like uh, fishing boost surfing, disco surfing, I think that wiggler surfing is sneakily the hardest type of sprite surfing in Kaizo. It can be. They don't quite move like a fishing boo or a disco shell, so you can't apply that same uh, logic to it. And they're just kind of sneaky, and they get out from under you at really bad moments. You fail me. Looking pretty good right now. Definitely got the hang of that piranha plant section. Moving down for the P-switch. Bumpity surfing is the worst. Ah, you know, I, 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 that's that's cool. That's cool. Definitely, uh, definitely everybody's everybody's subjective opinion. Bumpity surfing can be pretty pretty rough. I'll give you that. But I think bumpities kind of move like a disco, so it's a little easier to just get that to work. I think, in in in, in my opinion, the thing that makes wiggler surfing the trickiest is the erratic motions of the wiggler. And how they just can seemingly just kind of decide to not follow you for some reason. It's not jank in the sense that it's random. It's jank in the sense that it's tough for you to play that consistently. You fail me. Upper right-hand corner. Let's go. Oh, and there. Yep. And that did him in. That, that is the, the, the toughest thing about wiggler surfing. You make that jump for it. And uh, the wiggler just decides not to be there. Yeah, that is true. Bumpities are not vanilla either. So of the of the vanilla sprite surfs, I think wiggler surfing is actually secretly the toughest. It's the one that makes me the most nervous, I would say, as a player. Fishing boo, okay, I know how you move. Disco shell, wedge shape, let it lead you, you're fine. But uh But fishing boo, oof, man. Or I'm sorry, but wiggler, rather. You know, I thought of an analogy that I'd like to share with you all because I like to talk uh, uh, during commentary a little bit about just general Kaizo playing meta and, you know, how to improve as a Kaizo player and, uh, you know, things that you can do to, to practice and work on work on our games. And I watched a video the other day about, I think it was a Ver Veritaserum video. Um, probably some of you have seen it about how bikes work. 
It's actually kind of fascinating because I never really noticed. And that was like the whole point of the video is like, you know how to ride a bike, but you don't actually realize how they work. Um, and I realized that like a disco shell is kind of like that because when you're surfing on a disco shell, you want the disco kind of behind you and you're moving forward, but the disco is always catching up to you. Just like you fail me catching up to that big H. Oh, and Revolug right behind. Not to be denied too many times. You fail me and Revolug back to back. Yo, big third place. I've seen you fail me around in the races before. And uh, we've seen Quiet Mason's work here and there through the Kaizo community. I, I'm sorry if I forgot, but I, I don't know if I've seen Revolug's name before. So great job and a really explosive entry for Romhack races with a big third place tonight on a tough level, beating out some tough competition. Nice job. Nice job. Yo, hit the racers up with a follow if you're looking for a little bit more Kaizo in your lives on your Twitch viewing diet. Uh, go and follow some of the racers. There are tons of great players in our community, folks who would love to see you come into their chats and, you know, just say, hey, you can really be a big boost uh, just by being positive. Louis Doucet, positively one of the best players out there. Louis Doucet, nice job. Oops, all. Louis Doucet, getting a good time. Also, too, Kata Jason, thank you so much for the five months. Enjoy the brand new ROM hack race emotes. Spam them all you like. B2DE on the lower left, RB Pim, Liko, Gen Maru, and Halcyon. You know, the Wigglers are really making all the uh, all the difference in this level. <gasps> Excuse me. Uh, really making all the difference here uh, with their silly, uncooperative ways. I really, really like the palette in the background here, too. It's very soothing. I really, you know, I, custom stuff is nice, but I like a, a nice vanilla edit palette. I think it, it's just cool. I think, I'd, I don't know about you, but I design better levels if I made a cool palette for it already. Like, if, I'm, if I like the environment where the level that I'm going to make is taking place, I end up making better things. Here goes Halcyon with a shot. Gen Maru, a little bit farther on. Ah, that's the, the greed will get you. Don't listen to Wario. You get greedy on the positioning here. You are mm, really risking a death. H for Chon off stream. Nice. Five on the second section now. And yeah, there is something about Palette Swap Vanilla that I just, I, I find so endearing. I think a large part of that comes from playing so much Mario World as a kid and wanting to get to the next level. You know, there, there, was, there was a time all the way ago back in my life where just getting to Forest of Illusion was really cool. What, ooh, what's this level look like? What kinds of enemies are in this level? You wouldn't even know. And uh, yeah, the Palette Swap Vanilla, the custom stuff is nice. It's futuristic, uh, but Palette Swap Vanilla just reminds me of being a kid and having nothing but the game and the strategy guide and just sitting in my basement wondering what was the next level going to be like? And the Palette Swap Vanilla looks like those levels, you know? I think that's super interesting. Here goes RB Pim Lico. Lower right. Don't get hasty. Eight total on section two. Lovely. Misha Vargas and Germdove joining the fray. Thanks so much. Big shout outs for Osu. Osu Mario Cartman helping us do the scouting. Letting us know what uh, what racers are in what position. Dark and I as well. Thank you very much for that. Very, very much appreciate the, the time and energy that you give. We uh, couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. Kelgand as well. Thank you so much. You know, Rum Hack Races is brought to you by our volunteers, as well as a grant from Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard 
That's right, friends. Next time you're wiggling on your way down to a sandwich, think about applying a hefty dose of Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard. It takes a regular sandwich, and it makes it have yellow mustard on it. How cool is that? Order it by the tub, the tube, or the barrel at Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard.gov. Oh man, Roy's Castle, forget about it. So tough. So uh, ridiculously tough level. Spend a lot of time, yeah. A lot of time in Roy's Castle. <laughs> Roy's Castle and SMW remade from memory is borderline Kaiser. That's hilarious. That's how I remember it. I remember it as being actually impossible. I was baffled for the longest time. I couldn't. I played the game as, as a kid, and then when I got older, I tried to get all the exits, but I never. I couldn't figure it out for the longest time, and it was because I didn't realize that the Star Road levels, both of the exits counted. Because every time I got through the Star Road, but then every subsequent time, I just got the secret exit, and I never got the regular exit. And that was that's what eluded me for years as a kid, was just that I didn't get the uh, the extra exits in Star Road. I looked all over, just like where I don't understand where that level is. That's a rough death for Halcyon there. I noticed that throwing the P switch up and then dying. I think that was like a double sprite contact or something. But RB Pimlico made their way out. Nicely done. Sub twenty one minutes. Good job, RB Pimlico. Yeah, the ghost houses. Yeah, because you don't know. That's I think that's still a tough thing about ROM hacks. It's like, okay, there's one more secret exit, but there's no red level. Is it in the ghost house? Halcyon, not to be denied. Oh, I just thought of something. I bet that the racers are trying to rush a little bit at that final part where they're waiting on the wiggler and then about to go into the orange upward pipe. I think the racers are waiting or trying to go a little faster there rather. They're hasty because they think they need to beat the P-switch timer. I bet that's what it is. They think they need to beat the P-switch timer in the other room. And so they're trying to do that a little bit more quickly and that isn't a bad assumption because it's quite possible that you would definitely have to beat the p-switch timer but the thing is in my this is just my opinion as a player i'm just giving you my take on it it's not the objective truth but if it were me i would just try to get into the pipe play it as carefully as you can right you don't know that you need to time the p-switch out you're just assuming that and while that is a good assumption to make i don't know maybe uh maybe just hesitate take your time what, what did we learn in quickie world oh we learned not to hesitate and go fast wait never mind hang on bad lesson yeah soda lake a real hard one to find. I actually had to come up with a method to like get that secret exit because I couldn't fly that well as a kid. So I took a Yoshi and bounced on the saws. And yeah, top secret area was the donut donut ghost house exit, the upper ghost house. Yeah, where you fly. Yeah, Cheese Bridge, where you fly under the exit. The only I think that's the only time in the game. Where they actually required you to do like a like a flight dive thing. Yep, 
Yeah, we always ditched Yoshi as a kid. I don't, I don't, re I don't recall seeing anyone get that level with a flight until I saw a speed run of the game for my first time. I'm pretty. I'm honestly pretty sure the first time I ever saw someone not ditch Yoshi to get the cheese bridge uh, was was in a speed run. Every single kid I ever knew in the 90s, literally all of us ditched Yoshi. Nobody, nobody even knew how to fly. We barely knew how to fly. We all floated. That was pretty much what you did with the cape. You just float slowly. Yo, this is really exciting. I've just been handed an important bulletin. Speaking of Quickie World, next week, that's one week from today, the very next ROM hack race, Legendary Kaizo Maker, Quickie World 1, Quickie World 2, Quickie World with a Vengeance, Dram's Moving Castle, Kaizo 1, 100% world record holder, Valdio, is making a level for us. One of two levels, actually. And you're not going to want to miss it. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to miss it. I, maybe you do want to miss it. Maybe you don't like fun things. And I'm sorry for you. But that's okay. You know, it's fine. But uh, come on out. Yeah, if you want to race or uh, just check out all the action. Valdio's levels are always top tier. Valdio just has a perfect pitch in a way. I don't know if Valdio actually has perfect musical pitch, but... It's just got these pitch perfect levels in Kaizo that just so smooth, play well. Uh, the last Rum Heck Race level that uh, Valdio did for us, Dram's Moving Castle, is on the website if you want to check that out. And was a lot of fun. So come on out next week. And don't forget, we got the Boxing Day Throwdown. Uh, day after Christmas, December 26th, we're going to have a special race of some of the levels that you all voted for. We have a voting spreadsheet right now please get your votes in because we want to see what everybody wants to race and we'll have like a best of competition on boxing day halcyon boxing their way to the finish how about I just call off work every saturday you know every day that ends in day sorry i don't have i don't work anymore just make them still pay you but just don't go in Figure out a way to work, but not work. Misha Vargas joins us on the upper left. Halcyon GG. Jen Maru, B2DE, and Chon hanging out here on the second section. This is a really good level of fundamentals. A lot of great fundamentals being used here. Regrabs. Spin jump, positioning, momentum control, timing. I like I like levels like this that just are a very good roll through, just good platforming. Notice too, there is a little thing to help the racers that some people have noticed and some people have not noticed. There's a way to help yourself with that one tile gap. When you get up to the gap, here goes uh, Misha Vargas in the upper left. You'll see them do it. Uh, you get up to the left. See that upper part up there? You bonk up against that upper part, and then you neutral on the D-pad. And that lines you up so that you're right in the middle of that one-tile muncher gap and allows you to just fall nice and cleanly. Um, using that property is a really helpful little trick that you can use all over in Kaizo. Kaizo speedruns, Kaizo clears, not Kaizo, even just regular Super Mario World or other platforming games, honestly, because nine times out of 10, uh, not every game works this way, but especially these old school platform games, right? The wall bonk will kill your momentum. You bonk into the wall, you're not moving forward anymore, right? So now that you've done that, you are, you're going to fall down exactly parallel with the side of that wall, and that can help you line up things, line up a position, uh, make sure that you're always standing in the same spot, make sure you don't die on a particular fall. It beats having to wiggle 
because you know that your character is completely horizontally stationary and just dropping right down through there as opposed to not having that lineup where you actually have to kind of use the d-pad to put mario in that spot so if you're looking for ways to make jumps a little bit easier or ways to land in a in a more consistent way maybe find something in the background or on the uh something in the walls or in the ceiling that you could bonk against deliberately bonking in order to uh have a consistent position or to control your momentum and zero it out is a really helpful strategy b2 de81 in the door i mean the pipe getting the h gg Big, big ROM hack GG. Oh, yo, cool. Um, hearing from Doc here, we got, we'll have the final round of voting for Boxing Day Throwdown tomorrow, and we'll have a top 12. So that is really cool. And we'll get to have a race of like some of the best of the best, you know, audience, audience favorites, ROM hack race levels. What's up, Germ Dove in the lower left, Jen Maru still, Chan, and Misha Vargas. Bopping on these spinies. Hashtag bop the spiny. Misha Vargas with a chance at it. Ah. Wiggler surfing. Yo, hands up in chat. If you uh, ever use the wiggler trick to get extra lives, we're talking about playing this game back in the day. Uh, did you ever use the Forest of Illusion Infinite Wiggler trick? And if so, how did you learn about it? I learned about it from the Prima Strategy Guide, but it seemed as though a lot of people that played that game knew about that in one way or another. Is Prima still around? That's a good question. I, I hope so. You're just hearing about it now? Wow. Well, uh, allow me uh, then allow me to explain. So, combos in uh, Mario World is kind of an esoteric property. Uh, score in Mario doesn't really matter anyway. And yet, all throughout Mario history, there has been combo scoring. All the way back to Mario 1, uh, there are two types of combos in, in Mario games. There's what I refer to as a bounce combo and a shell combo. And you already know what those things are, but the difference is important. If you uh, bounce combo, obviously you jump on a group of enemies, bloop, 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 and then you get a one-up, right? And you don't touch the ground. That's a bounce combo. Um, and a shell combo, obviously, is kicking a shell into a group of enemies. Either one of those things will get you a one-up at the end of the combo. But the combo advances. And that's where things get weird. So you notice that if Mario is standing on the ground and you jump up on an enemy, you get 200 points for that, right? And then the next one is 400 if you don't touch the ground. So every node in that bounce advances the counter by one. 200, 400, 800, 800. 1,000 points, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, um, and then all the way up to a 1-up. The thing about Wigglers is for whatever reason, a Wiggler doesn't stop advancing the counter on bounces. And what that means is kind of strange, and I don't actually know what the code is trying to ascribe to it, but if you bounce on a Wiggler... You get the same combo. You get 200, 400 for the next hit, 800, all the way up to a one-up. And then Mario World also has two-ups and three-ups for extra bounces in a combo. Not every enemy can give you a three-up. It's really strange um, why they even put that in the first place. But once you get a three-up on a Wiggler, the next bounce on a Wiggler, it just advances the counter again. Because there's a little internal counter in there that's counting the nodes of bounces. 
and it's uncapped when you bounce on Wigglers. And so, if you go to Forest of Illusion 1 in the vanilla game and you bring a, uh, a cape, um, you can use it to keep respawning the Wigglers. And what you do is you bounce on a Wiggler, it goes from yellow to red, and then red Wigglers shouldn't give you another node. Notice you don't get combo nodes for hitting a red Wiggler. It's just a null. Um, but if you go to Forest of Illusion 1, you get the cape and you go to that middle section by the checkpoint. And then you hit one Wiggler and you hit another Wiggler. Now you've got a 200-400 combo. And then you float off screen and respawn them like we saw Quiet Mason do earlier in the round. Um, you respawn the Wiggler from yellow to red. That gets you another hit. And you keep doing that and keep cycling Wigglers. And after you get past three up, you start to get glitched values. And the counter bugs out. It doesn't know what to do. So you just get keep getting higher and higher and higher values. And you wind up getting hits that get you hundreds of thousands of points. Coins. It also gives you coins for some reason. And uh, it'll max out your lives quickly. And that's a trick as old as time in Mario World. And I'm happy to share it with all of you. Technically five ups? How do you get a five up? How do you get a... F Wait, how do you get a five up? There's, an, there's one other way that I discovered to access that uncapped uh, combo value. And you have to have uh, the maximum... You have to have fish on screen. Or any sprites, I think. If you have sprites on screen when you touch the goal tape, uh, if you have too many sprites, it will also access that glitched value. Jen Maru, no glitches here. Jen Maru in the upper right getting out of there. I love how everybody skips that discolored log. There's that bluish log that's over the pit. No one runs on it. Everybody jumps right over it. I appreciate that skepticism. Great job, Jen Maru. Well played. But how do you get a five up in Mario World? I don't I don't know if I knew about that. <laughs> they were gonna go two more ups higher, but they didn't do the trademark issues because it would be seven up. Uh, ha, ha. That's really that's a that's a good one. That's a clever joke. That's a clever, it's a clever joke. You know, what's funny is you can get a seven up in cool spot. <laughs> we got TD Warrior HS coming in lower left, Chon in the lower right, uh, Chon in the upper right, and Misha Vargas in the upper left. I'm seeing double for Chon Dontors. Ah, uh, sorry, that's a Ag Agoria? I hope I'm saying that right. Please tell me if I'm wrong. I did watch that John Oliver bit. I thought it was super funny. Uh, Similarian shared it on our Discord, and that was super funny. I, You know, in the back of my mind, I was hoping that he would have mentioned the fact that Cool Spot got run at a GDQ, uh, but I, I I do appreciate that. I do, I do appreciate seeing seeing cool spot on John Oliver I hate wigglers well it's over now friend you 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 they're not gonna wiggle anymore don't worry the wiggles will stop now have a fruit salad to celebrate good job on the race thank you so much for playing with this Hope you are feeling okay. Complete my album? Nah, I didn't make I didn't finish it yet. I worked on it last night, but you can't force it. So I got I got a little bit. It's 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 coming. It's coming. I just yeah, I can't force can't force creativity. I was hung up on that last night. Yo, Chon, 
not hung up at all here. Oh, what a brave, what a brave player, Chon Dantor. What a brave player running across that discolored log. That discolored log, if you see that and you don't know for a fact that it's safe, that could be anything. That could be munchers. That could explode. It could send you up into the sky. At this point, it could be anything. Germ Dove in the upper right, second section. Are Wigglers tomatoes? That angry tomato snake over there. Like, how are you? How are you doing? I'd like to spend uh, spend a little bit of time and say say a special Romhack races, good wishes, and our community is here to help out for those who have been affected by the tornadoes uh, in in ways large or small. It's a scary situation, and we at Romhack races, I know I speak for everybody. Uh, we. The heart goes out to everyone who's affected by that and our community as well as I know many other Twitch communities are standing at the ready to help our friends out in times of crisis and times of need so big uh, big big rum hack race love in chat for everybody that has to deal with that it's uh it's, it's, a, it's a rough situation I hope we can get through together The wigglers are cool. They re there's, there's there's a lot that they can do because they're wigglers are one of those sprites that in the vanilla game they only have a couple of wigglers in a couple of very specific situations, and wigglers kind of hide the fact that they have these weird properties in the vanilla game because you never actually see them behaving weirdly because they designed it that way to like not show you that. But in Kaizo, once we can take the Wiggler out of its natural habitat and put it in a strange new land, then you get to see uh, see some interesting properties. Yeah, yo, Mithrina, I wanted to remind everybody, uh, Hack Jam on SMW Central Team Collaborative Hack Making Competition. The deadline for that has, ex I think it's been extended till Monday, but get your, uh, get your stuff finished up. I'm excited to be a Kaizo judge for that, along with Lungfish, k and uh, me. I'm like, there's three of us. Who's the other one? Oh, yeah, it's me. Yeah, Monday at noon. So good luck to everybody. I know, uh, I know we're going to see some really cool creative stuff. So that's a good question, actually. I don't really know what the hitbox of a Wiggler is shaped like. I uh, I, I assume it's kind of rectangular. Um, I think... I wonder if all the segments don't have their own hitbox, and that's what causes some weirdism on the fall. But, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Although D to the 4th did make a hitbox visualizer for SMW, which is very helpful. Yeah, I would, I would like to know the answer to that as well. Where exactly is the hitbox on the Falling Wiggler? I, I, in fact, I don't actually know. It would be nice to, uh, nice to see a visualization of that. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I actually don't know that one. It's not, um, it's not tech you see very often. Is the, the wig, wig, wig elevator. 
Uh, it is it is used occasionally. Luminescent has one. Um, but also, you know, Wigglers are cool, and they do this cool trick, but this is also kind of like the only trick that they do. You know, they have that one Wiggler falling Wiggle Elevator. Wiggle Elevator. And that's kind of that's kind of it. There's, like, that's what they do. And there's, like, interesting ways to use that, but there's not that much else you can do with them. Also, Wiggle Elevator is the name of my new uh, Vaporwave band. Patent pending. Aw, uh, single segment wigglers. I like that idea. Kind of silly, but I like it. That's an impressive collection of wiggle emotes from different channels, even. I'm impressed at that. Nice, you love to see it. All remaining racers entering section two. We're about 45 minutes in, two hour broadcast tonight. We schedule about two hours for these every Saturday. Don't forget, you can check out romhackraces.com to learn a little bit more about us and what we're doing. Get this patch for yourself, try it out anytime, and join our Discord server. It's a cool place. Everything's going really smoothly tonight. I don't feel like there's like no problems. Seems like folks are enjoying the level. We got the emotes. We got the new emotes in. Seems like everything's just going going smooth. Thanks for being a part of it. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to just ask um, regarding ROM hack races or Kaizo, Mario, or whatever you wanna whatever you wanna know. We got Misha Vargas, Germ Dove, TD Warrior, and Ag Agoria working hard. Twenty twenty one has turned out to be a monster year for Kaizo. I'd like to do like a year in review. <clears throat> Look at some of my favorite hacks of the year. Why am I such a cool dude? I couldn't tell you why. It is a deliberate effort though. Germ dove, uh oh. Oh, yep, the suspicion. Nicely done, Germ Dove. Way to play. Sub hour. Good clear. Good clear. <clears throat> nice job. I don't know. I just try to be mindful. Mindfulness is appealing. In myself and in others. I think that's what it is. It might, I don't think it's really cool. You know, like, oh, you're cool. Like, ah, I mean, thanks. 
I just try to, I just, it's just mindfulness. I just try to, just try to be mindful of things. Who, people, places, information. I like thinking. I just like, you know, I, I just, I like mindfulness. I like noticing things. I like being observant. It's helpful. It's helpful in a lot of ways. You know, in, in, introspection is also a video game strat. If you really get down to it, if you really think about it, you know, the same kinds of the same kinds of skills of mindfulness can be applied to your video gaming in in a in a one to one relationship, right? Like, if you play mindfully, if you play aware of your position, the position of the enemies, the gimmick of the level, you'll play better and you'll learn more from your deaths. You know, it's sometimes it's it's frustrating if you don't know how to learn. If you don't know what it is that you could do to get better, that's that's frustrating, right? Because there's nothing to be mindful of, but just like staying observant, playing carefully, playing playing with your with your observations is a really good way to improve Get some emotes in chat for your favorite racer. I wanna, I wanna see some, uh, some of the combo potential. We have the new ROM hack race emotes with a lot of combo potential. You could combo the arms onto different, uh, different emotes. I wanna see, uh, I wanna see what kind of combos you feel like making. Plenty of good ones out there. Nicely done, TD Warrior in the pipe. Yo, and the big 26 for the win. Nice job. Well played. Yo, TD Warrior, they uh, they had some time. They had a time learning how to get into that that Wiggler elevator. And uh, once they figured that out, they were just off and running. Nice job. GG. Proto Pizza coming in here in the lower left. Second section. Wiggly did not jump the log, I know. It turns out this time that the log doesn't kill you, but if you don't know that, man, that log could do anything. I mean, literally anything. That log could turn you into a frog. Chew! Chew! Excuse me, I'll be right back. Be right back. Excuse me, a chew. Oh, it seems I'm allergic to good gameplay and cool emote combos. Dan, I like that one a lot because Rami can pet both of the sleeping pups. Big fan. Well, thanks for being a part of Rum Hack. Rom hack races. How'd you do? Splendid. Splendid, my pal. Sub hour is legit. Good job. 
You beat people. <laughs> you you beat someone. Nicely done. Thank you for racing with us. Hope it was a fun time. Welcome back. Ah, everybody does really well. There are I I have not seen a bad player in ROM hack races. How big is the ROM hack race staff? Well, there's uh there's me, there's Dr. No, uh, there's Kelgand, who we've recently added, a very kind individual. Uh, let's let's look at, hang on here, well, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we got Kelgand in here, we got Nexus, we got D to the fourth, helping us out with the website, Fawful, Dekula, and we also have uh, volunteers, um, Om Nom Nom, Sojo, SJ Charlie the Cat, playtesting, uh, I'm going to forget someone and feel bad about that. Um, yeah, that. I think I got everybody. Did I get everybody? Yeah, learning, learning the Wiggler Surf. For real though, it is. I like I was saying before. I think Wiggler Surf is the sneakily the toughest sprite surf in the game. I think I think sneakily Wiggler Surfing is tougher than Disco, Saw, or Fishing Boo. A or Torpedo Ted or Fugu. I think this. I think Wiggler is tougher than Fugu. Atari, yes, big shout outs. Atari 2.0, also kind staff member and has helped us out for a long time. Ah, uh, sorry, Splash. It doesn't work that way. By by enrolling and trying, you become a good player. Uh, bad bad players are the ones that that aren't playing right now. You know, they're sitting it out. Not to say that anyone who can't participate is a bad player. It's a joke. But nah, sorry, it won't work that way, Splash. As as soon as you start trying, trying is what makes you good. So uh, you know. You automatically metamorphose into a good player just by doing your best. It takes a lot of nuance to be able to play something like this. Mario World is a very interesting engine for a platformer. It's a very interesting set of physics and there is a lot of nuance. You can play Mario World like you can play a musical instrument with all the subtlety and nuance and slight motions. You can you can play a very controlled game. Personally, I think that's the nice thing about Kaizo. You know, I, I as a person, as a player, I enjoy learning. I just like it. It's just fun. I like getting better at something, and I like practicing. I like doing that same thing over and over again. It, 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 it calms you down. It's, it's just nice. It feels good. And Kaizo is especially cool because you will never be able to beat it all and and once you're done with all the rta stuff go for the task stuff the kaizo you know kaizo tool assisted uh if you want more of a challenge once you've done everything that humans could ever do which you still won't be able to get done um you can always get better you can continually learn and grow and improve and i say this as a 30 year player of the game i am not done improving either i i also am in, in search of challenges can find them on the regular 
So, you know, don't don't even really think about it as like you will eventually get to a place where you are now good and you will not struggle anymore. It's it's a never ending slope. And I know that might sound like a bummer, depending, you know, on, on what your perspective is. And that's valid. But if for, for those that just want to continually learn and grow, it the sky's the limit. You can just keep getting better and better and better and better at Kaizo. It's a never ending slope muncher. But not linked at X2. There's always something harder. There's always something more challenging. And you can always get better at certain fundamentals. You know, moving Mario, running, jumping, landing, uh, all these things you can get shockingly good at. Shockingly good. Better than you are now. And I and I, I don't say that as like a like a downward compliment because I have the same thing. I also can get better. It is way possible. Uh, just put in the put in the time and the work, and I think that's enjoyable. I, I I like that. It means there's always another mountain to climb, and there's always going to be something else to learn and and to accomplish. That is true. Om nom nom with a good point. If you've beaten, like, one level of Quickie World, you have beaten something harder than 95% of games. You know, e even even a, even a Quickie World, one of the classically easy Kaizo games, is Kaizo. You know, keep, keep in mind that Kaizo Beginner is super expert regular game. Does that make sense? It's just, it doesn't... You can only have so many super, 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 super experts before you need another word for it. And then you start at the beginning. So Kaizo Beginner, no, that's super duper ultra expert regular game. Oh, Agaria, I saw the Nye. Ha. Well, I certainly hope y'all are doing doing okay tonight, staying warm and cozy. It's pretty uh pretty dark and stormy night out here. Nice. Final four on the board right now. Misha Vargas, Ender of Games, Proto Pizza, Agaria, and everybody making it to the P Switch. Nice. So it's just a matter of being being careful, picking your moment here with this wiggler. Misha Vargas with a shot at it. All right. Now just, ah, just be careful. Yo, ordered some pizza. Delicious. Oh, man. So I think it's too late to order pizza here now. It's nine. I don't know. How late's the pizza place open? Can we order pizza? Chat, do you want anything from the pizza place? I wish I could get y'all pizza. Sorry I can't. I wish I could be like a like a little league coach and take take everybody out to Chuck E. Cheese's after the race. Even if you didn't win, that's okay. We'll still we can still go to Chuck E. Cheese's.
I said I can't buy you all pizza, but you didn't even ask if I could buy specifically you pizza. You could have got free pizza, pal. Yeah, you, you missed out on free pizza. Sorry. Wah, wah. The way your brain processes information does not seem to do well with Kaizo. Would you mind elaborating on that if you're comfortable sharing? I would just like to learn more about how people try to learn Kaizo so I can get better at teaching them. I get, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sneeze. I'm sorry, I'm allergic to good gameplay. I'll be right back. Okay. Hello. Hello, I made it. I am Misha Vargas with the Nye. Yeah, Millie, that that's a that's a relatable issue. That's um I feel that way about playing guitar. I can't I can't even wiggle like without even touching a guitar. I can't wiggle my fingers as fast as some shred guitar players, you know, blah, 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 the Eddie Van Halen buckethead scales. I can't even like, I can't even wiggle my fingers that fast, let alone like actually use that for anything. So I definitely get, well, I mean, guitar people do it the same way Kaizo players do it. You just start really slow. You, you play it if, if like, um, like treble picking. You know, just like da 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 on a note with your pick, right? You just start out really slow, and then once you get good at doing it slow, you a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. The thing about Kaizo is that a lot of folks didn't necessarily start out with Kaizo. Myself as a player, I played Vanilla Mario World, which was like doing it slowly. You know, so like when you see someone playing Kaizo really quickly, they're I know this sounds silly, but they're playing slowly, quickly. Do you know what I, Do you know what I mean? Does that Does that even make sense at all? Like they're they're it's slow, deliberate actions. They're just internalized to the point where they do them that quickly. Proto Pizza getting out of here. Sub one oh seven. Well played. Good job, Proto Pizza. Agaria looking for their own win. They'll treat inputs in a way that allows you to associate images and movement well. That's valid, friend. That that's that's perfectly valid. I wasn't trying to grill you or question you or anything. I just wanted to uh, just just wanted some insight because I like uh, understanding how people think about uh, Kaizo. Yeah, more about dynamics than speed. I hear you. Yeah, it, it it's you're making discrete actions. This is, and this is, I know this is silly, but this is really like, this helps me. And this is how I kind of try to explain it to people. Chop up your movement into the smallest amount of space. Like, let's watch Agaria here on the bottom. Land, then jump to hit the switch. Then land again, then jump to touch the wiggler. Then get over the top that you're supposed to jump. Then fall down. Then bounce on the piranha then lift up off the piranha then go to the right right like the the you you break it down you break it down into the smallest you know one input at a time one action at a time jump you're in the air and then land jump and land are two actions you do these very discrete actions and think about what you're doing in terms of discrete actions there's a jump and a land except you do that very quickly does that, does that make sense? That uh, everything, if, if really good Kaizo players, really good video game players play with a buttload of discretion. 
they are doing exactly the action that they are doing at that time. And I know, like, I don't know, maybe this sounds really silly or, like, self-evident, but it, it, but it's all about those discrete inputs. Agaria, yo, you love to see it. Let's go. Let's go. We got the wins now. We got them. Nicely done. Agaria, well played. Coming out on top. GG. Ender of Games looking to end this one themselves. We might get some quick wins here. Everybody's everybody's piling in. Oh, yeah. There it is. Ender of Games. Yo, amazing. Yo, the back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Excellent job. Ender of Games with the win. Leaves us with Misha Vargas hanging out. Well, we usually schedule about two hours for these broadcasts. We never know, you know, how many people or how long it's going to take. Uh, I got no no qualms about hanging out and shooting the breeze with everybody for a little bit, but we'll let uh, we'll let everybody figure out what we're about to do here. Misha Vargas, you know, not maybe not long. You know, maybe the play tonight is to uh, to hang out and cheer Misha Vargas on, and then find a find a cool raid where we could dump some of these uh, rom hack races and moats. Again, if you want to try this for yourself, we're talking about learning Kaizo tonight and, uh, you know, getting a little bit better. If you want to try this for yourself, go on over to romhackraces.com. This is week 169. Nice. And uh, go on over to romhackraces.com. You can get this patch or any of the uh, the other levels that we've raced. Ah, play both sides. Uh, Yeah, there, there's a world record for you. One player Pong. Play both sides of a game of Pong and see how long you can go without scoring any point. One player Pong. It was a joke my buddy and I made back in the day. It's just like a little, little in-joke. Like, oh, I'm going to get the one player Pong world record. You know what? I just this just kind of occurred to me. One player pong would actually be a kind of a cool game. Like imagine designing a game like that. Right where you had two spinner paddles and you controlled to, it's like breakout, right? But you have to keep the ball in the middle and control both sides of it. That actually kind of would be a cool game. I'm surprised they never did that with something like Arkanoid or whatever before. That, that's kind of a neat concept. I could see like an indie game like that, you know, where it's like you're inside like a reactor and you have to like keep a ball of electricity alive or something. I could see that. Remember Jez Ball? Remember Jez Ball for the Windows Entertainment Pack? I know it didn't have the, the one player Pong thing, but yeah, versus Arkanoid, yeah. Oh my gosh, Misha Vargas working so hard they're playing so careful. Ah, oh, they're 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 doing so well. Look at this, look at this amazing care. I'm not joking. This is this is phenomenal. This is phenomenal control right now. This is this is what to do though. Wait for your moment. Ah, I think they might have given up or something. That looked like they gave up. Co-op pong. Oh yeah, totally. Oh yeah, totally. There was a game uh, kind of like that, I guess. Um, it was called Warlords. It was made by Atari. Uh, they had it on 2600, and they also had it in the arcade. If you ever get a chance to play Warlords with some friends, treat yourself. It is a super fun game. Uh, it's just like Breakout Pong, except you each of the four players control one of the four corners of the board and you have like a little like half circle shield that you move back and forth and the, the aim is just to you know bounce the ball at your opponents and defend your own corner uh no it's it's such a fun yeah it's such a fun game i really recommend warlords super fun every time i have friends over that we're actually playing games I, we're always playing warlords i make if <laughs> anyone that comes to my house and plays games has to play like combat and warlords and crap no house rules play warlords
Shatter. No, what is Shatter? I've never even heard of it. No, no, I've never heard of it. Cool. Oh, okay, like a humble bundle, yeah. Oh, nice, Chaos. Nice. Kaizo players would be absolutely dominant at uh, video game name that tune. I've played I've played versions of like game name that tune at retro cons and stuff before. Kaizo players would absolutely destroy at that game. We know all the songs. Oh, Super Mario World Central has a video game music guessing contest every so often. That's cool. I don't think I knew about that. There's a lot of times, like, I'll play a game that I have played a ROM hack with that song in it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, whoa, the song from Luminescent. Yeah, there it is. Jeez. Can we get some energy? Get some pog emotes or whatever for Misha Vargas. They have got this. That wiggler is just not behaving. You know, okay, this might be an unpopular opinion. As a player, I'm not... I don't really like Castlevania. And I, I know that's an unpopular opinion because it is objectively a good game. And my opinion does not matter. I enjoy runs of it from people who are good at it and like it. But as a platformer, I find the movement to be far too stiff. Way too stiff. The jump, that weird, you're like locked into that one jump trajectory. Super weird. I find it to be just a stiff, awkward game. I mean, I get it. It's not Mario. Right? Like, not not everything can be Mario. That was basically my complaint as a kid. It's not Mario. I mean, it, it, it you know, it's good, but it doesn't play like Mario. Like, Mario has really unrealistic physics. A person of that size should not be able to jump that high. Like, we just intuitively know that. <clears throat> like, Castlevania feels like you are the character. You, you know what I mean? Your character is kind of buff and heavy... And so you feel buff and heavy. It makes sense. It's not... It, it, this is a me problem. I, uh... Th this is a me thing. But yeah, Castlevania just... I don't know, man. Yeah, you ever eat a whole roasted chicken from a wall and then whip something? It's hard. You're all slow. I think they did that on Mythbusters.
Misha Vargas playing so careful. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This could be fixed. Nice try. Nah, you know what? Honestly, I can't even say Proto Pizza that I don't like it. I because I do like it. I just uh I just don't like the controls. That that to to be even more specific, it's the controls specifically. It's not even the game. Like, you know, I mean, castles are cool. Vanias are all right, I guess. Dracula's cool. You know, I like monsters and spooky stuff, which is kind of a shame that I don't like it because otherwise I would like to play it. It'd probably be one of my favorites, but I just got... I got inundated with Mario movement and... And so did Misha Vargas. No! I'm sitting here watching Joy Misha Vargas' gameplay, and I also am just looking at that Amethyst Rocks Pride Poggin in chat. I love how the little moth's little hands wave. It's so freaking cute. Look at the little stubby hands on that moth, and then they're just like wave. It's freaking adorable. Misha Vargas, you know what would be adorable, Lur? It's one up pipe. Ay, yay, yay, yay. What's up, Spud? Good to see. Freaking Wigglers. I don't know, once again, how are you doing? Hope you're feeling okay. Hope your night's going well. Yo, sorry, once again, if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to shout them out in chat. 
You are a kind and noble audience, and it is an honor to do these for you. All right, let's go. This is it. Misha Vargas. No, for the win. We're going to take this out to one hour, 30 minutes. But like I said, we do these every Saturday night. Uh, if you want to drop by again, smash that follow button or tap it gently. Don't break it. It's made out of breakable porcelain. Uh, smash that follow button. Come back and see us again Saturday nights, 8 o'clock Eastern here on ROMHack Races. You can check out romhackraces.com. That's our website. Get this patch and, uh, you know, wiggle, wiggle your way over to some fun. Don't forget to drop a follow for the racers if you want a little bit more Kaizo in your Saturday night or any time, really. Uh, there are so many great people streaming tons of cool Kaizo stuff on Twitch, and uh, you're one click away from a cool, cool new pal. <clears throat> color of potato? Uh, potato colored. Om nom nom would be the one to know. This is it. Maybe. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Misha Vargas in there. Watch out. Let's go. Yo, nicely done. We got them all. We got them all. All through one hour, 30 minutes. Thank you for being a part of it tonight. Thank you for being a part of Romhack Races. I will leave it up to Doc. Behind the scenes, our good pal, to pick a raid for us tonight. Uh, thank you so much. We got everybody all clear, sub two, sub 130, and some new emotes to light the way. Thank you for being a part of it. Um, like I said, you know, you can check out the website. Uh, you can jump on our Discord. Come back and see us again on Saturdays for another race. And uh, we got that Boxing Day showdown coming up the day after Christmas. And we've also got, uh, what's that, Valdio. We got a Valdio level next week. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, you can sign up on the website and race. We all know Valdio makes really, really good stuff. And uh, so, yeah, like, you know, thanks for being a part of it. Like I said, I hope you have a comfy Saturday night. Uh, I don't know who is playing Kaizo on Twitch tonight. We're going to go. Oh, this is a good one. We're going to go say hey to Alice in Wonderland Games. They're playing Bun Bun 2 and it's her birthday. Excellent raid. So grab some. If you got the new ROM Hack Race emotes, grab those up. And use them, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go gonna go check out a friend. Um, I don't know. You probably heard everything that I had to say. So uh, you know, just thank you for watching tonight. Thank you for being a part of it. You matter. Your thoughts matter. Your heart matters. Your feelings matter. You matter to other people in your lives, and you matter to me as human beings. You matter to the internet's number one long boy for it, and the people that matter to you in your lives would love to hear from you about that. Yo, we know Black Lives Matter, LGBTQIA plus lives matter. Indigenous lives matter. Disabled lives matter. You too. And I hope to see you all again around on Twitch. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hack the planet. Keep being cool. Peace out.